yourself out there, hot grind, music. make hot music, and the, and the fans will respond accordingly. And uh, just make sure you have a bit of numbers to also back you up that you do have a hot song, it's not only for your friends, but it's hot for everybody. Yeah. So. And teamwork makes the dream work. Like, obviously, yeah. while we work is that we have a strong team, like, you can do a whole lineup with just Cash Sun Life, which I think is pretty crazy. We've been, we managed to put together a good team from having a host to rappers, we've got a DJ VG as well, and then the dust yeah. management as well. So, promoters, All that's the plug together. right there. That's the plug. <laughs> Hit us up, send us an, an email, send yeah. you a quote. <laughs> Let's take it back to the early 2000s and 2010 era of hip-hop when there was a sudden boom of hip-hop collectives that would dominate the music scene with different groups displaying different and unique aspects of each camp. We had groups like the highly buzzing squad known as Josie that gifted us with artists like The Les, Bonga Anifasi and the late Crazy Lou and bangers like What's With The Attitude. We also had the buzzing collective known as Boys and Bucks featuring Scoop Makatin, Stilo Makolide and of course Rick Rick who lit up the hip hop scene during the 2010 era. But for today's topic, I'll be speaking on a collective or label that were on top of the game during the 2014, 15, er 16 era of hip hop that gave us multiple bangers and let's not forget at one point also ran the fashion scene. Yes, I'm indeed talking about Cash Time Fam and I'll be giving a brief overview of the fallouts that occurred throughout the 8 year lifespan and what has happened since to each Cash Time member. Hope you guys enjoy. Now this tale actually starts with our three main protagonists, the brothers Izi Hanabe aka Mai, Bantu Hanabe aka Ntuksa and of course Ntokozo Mdluli, mainly known as KO. They actually met way back in their college days where they attended Fall University of Technology where KO graduated with a diploma in public relations, however he struggled to find any work. It got so bad for KO, it is reported that his mother even sent his CV to the South African police services and scored an interview but KO knew he couldn't go through with it, as he knew his real passion was music. And by 2005 is when he decided to link up with his pals Mai and Tuxa to come together and form the legendary hip-hop collective we all now know as Teargas, releasing their debut album Shubi Le Bovu, which was a major success, gifting us with the bangers Teargas Anthem, Hold On, and of course the classic song Chance, which detailed the life of a young delinquent seeking redemption in the Kasi, and honestly, if you want to experience for yourself how talented of a group these guys were, I recommend you check that song out. It's a certified classic in my opinion. These guys were making waves going on to release more projects like their second album Wafa Wafa in 2008 with the standout tune Champions featuring Bongo Riot and only a year later would they release their third album Dark or Blue that gifted us with the classics Go Away, Take It Easy, Mshobo Wami and let's not forget the classified banger Goodfellas that featured the two late legends Pro Kid and of course Double HP. They finally went on to release their final project is Tear Gas in 2012 titling the album Namba Namba. They gave us songs like Turning Table featuring Two Face, Wake Up and the song Paradise featuring Toy Lamaze. You'll be glad to know that everything that happens, whether it be the concept of the song itself, yeah. whether it be the beat, whether it be the concept of the music video, the direction of the video, the marketing, the designs, the styling, everything. Is styling on the video, styling on the magazine, styling everywhere. everywhere. We do it ourselves. Like everywhere. we hard workers in the stand. Like Matter of fact, we ain't people. even concerned about how we dress. We only concerned about our fans and how we put our music out there. It's got to be very crisp. We got to work hard on the on the art. We've got to work hard on how we look. But more importantly. Our fans have to be satisfied. Okay. By 2013, KO and Mai decided to move things to the next level, partnering up with marketing executive Tabi Sokati, forming the famous entertainment label Cash Time Life, signing KO as their first official artist. Now you may be thinking, what about Tuxa's involvement in all of this? Surely their close partner would also be involved in the formation of Cash Time, right? Well, apparently the MC was excluded from the official formation of Cash Time Live, even though according to Tuxa himself, 
Cash Time was actually established way back in 2007 without his knowledge by Mai and KO. However, Duxa continued to work with the pair and only decided to pull out when he found out the title had been changed from Cash Time into Cash Time Life, and he sadly only found out about this information over Twitter. It is Duxa's belief that the pair had done this because Duxa had also been working as a lecturer at the Ekuruleni East College in graphic design and he felt the pair were just looking for their own methods of also earning a fixed salary. At this point, Tuxa stated there was no bad blood between them. However, reports came out that Tuxa and Mai's relationship as brothers had been impacted, which makes complete sense to me. I would know what to do if I found out my blood brother had gone behind my back and betrayed me. But let's get back to Cash Time Live, who now consisted of KO and Mai, who went on to add more unique talents onto their team like the AB Crazy, Smashes, Mags and of course Kid X who were the company's bright prospects into taking cash time to the superstar level they had worked so hard for. But before this had to happen, they obviously had to make a big first impression and this was perfectly executed by KO when he had released his debut solo single titled Mission Statement which was seen as a major stamp on the hip hop scene as a solo artist earning him a spot on AKA's bang of a song Run Josie which was released in 2014 and KO was arguably the star of the song leaving us with the legendary bar what's going on with these amateurs over the internet leaving some messages. However, it's quite clear to everyone what really introduced Cash Time Fam to the country. March 2014 saw the release of KO's legendary classic of a song titled Kara Kara featuring the promising Kid X and introducing him into the mainstream success. This song was constantly being played on every music station and the video was on every channel, racking up millions of views on YouTube and the video was the perfect display of what Cash Time represented as young go-getters having fun in their classy playground and let's not forget, this was a song that imprinted everyone with the famous bar, Cash Time Totti for Life. The song even went on to grab multiple nom nominations and this hype continued when Mai released his surprise bang of a song, Ugogo, in 2014 featuring the dope music video displaying what will happen when your granny leaves the house unattended and taken over by the carefree grandson. And this tune also became a classic, really pulling out a statement that cash time was yet to stay. K.O. had also released his banger Son of a Gun by December 2014 before releasing his well-placed album Skanda Republic, which was his first solid attempt at introducing the rest of his cash time fam like Mags and Masandi and even had the classic song Skanda Love featuring the talented Nanin Gom. I gotta give it out to KL. He had a solid plan by creating a buzz around his name before one by one introducing his fam, especially after the success of his song Kara Kara. And he even stated himself that the album was essentially the sole marketing tool for him to boost Kid X, Mai and Mag's career. And it was even reported that after the success of DJ Vigilante's banger Pasop that featured the Cash Time crew, a full on Cash Time Fam album, then titled Cash Time All Stars, was in the works, but the project was eventually canned when it took too long to complete. However, by this time, most of Zanti was now familiar with who and what Cash Time Life was all about, and let's not forget how big of a fashion brand Cash Time was, with everyone wearing the iconic Cash Time t shirts or caps that were being sold everywhere. Heck, I remember being a young kid begging my mom to cop a bootleg version of the Cash Time cap that was being sold by every street vendor because everyone had owned a Cash Time item. It was basically SA's version of YMCMB at the time. But fans were really anticipating what else each artist had in store for the game. This is though when things started to fall apart and the fallouts began to occur leading to the eventual demise of Cash Time and now I will be going through each artist on the label, why they left and what they are up to nowadays. AB Crazy had a long come up in the hip hop scene, starting as early as 2002 where he won a Pop Idols music competition while I was in high school and after he had graduated from the Twani University of Technology, he embarked on his journey to Josie where he joined Octave Couplet producing music for heavyweights like Pro Kid, Double HP, Slicker and even Tear Gas with the list of big names continuing. And by 2010, he 
decided to pursue a solo career, releasing multiple singles and eventually completing his first mixtape, Gossip Folks, which actually wasn't released to the public, but instead sold separately, where his songs got multiple airplays on different radio stations. And by 2011, he had released his first music video for the song, Man of the Moment, which earned him spots on artist songs like Pro Kid and of course, Speedy and Stone's classic song, Pop Bottles, which he provided the legendary hook. And by the middle of 2011, AB Crazy had now joined up with Cash Time Fam, working on the hits Goodbye, Get Down, and Till the End of Time. And it was quite clear that AB Crazy was heavily involved with the Cash Time's success before Cash Time was even considered a household name in the music scene. However, according to AB, he had attempted to want to release his own mixtape under the Cash Time label with the aid of Cash Time members at the time, but was unsuccessful when other artists were apparently not ready for it. According to AB, what also bothered him was his constant link with being referred to as that guy in cash time instead of him as an artist with his own unique aspect and he felt underappreciated. He also felt that he had to move on from cash time to save his brand as an artist. He explained how he even had difficulties working with other artists because he was now stuck with the cash time and by 2012 AB had left cash time to pursue his own solo career. Ever since his departure, AB Crazy has gone on to fulfill a decent career releasing his album The Homecoming in 2012 featuring classics like Pop Bottles and Man of the Moment. He went on to release multiple singles like his song M.O.N. featuring the legends Trumpies in 2014. And let's not forget his crazy feature on M.E.G.'s banger Rans and Nylas and of course Fifi Cooper's Kisses that both released back in 2014. He continued to release more music like his song Nobody back in 2016 and his other song Numbers which featured on his 2017 album titled Blue Skies. And he also went on to work with other DJs like DJ Dimples and DJ Capital and fast forward to more recent times where he released Sorry in 2017, his song Omika in 2018, his song No Limit, Trust and overall Overtime all releasing in 2019. His most recent work is the song Snapchat alongside Abzi. So it's quite safe to say Abby Crazy has experienced a decent career since his departure from Cash Time, even appearing on multiple shows like Club 808, Shizners and Vuzu Entertainment. And when Goodbye became big, that was now AB Crazy. But people didn't know me as AB Crazy. It was still that guy from Cash Time. Yeah. I would go to restaurants and people would be like, oh, Cash Time, yeah. you know? <laughs> and, it just, and it bothered me so yeah. much. Like, I felt like, so... And they credited. Yes, yeah, so, like, yeah. I, so what's gonna happen to me after this? So if I decided today, like, I'm gonna leave this, mm. what now? Okay. I'm not gonna say I was bigger than the yeah. brand, but I'm just gonna say that I I, I wasn't getting what I wanted. Yeah. It's got nothing to do with everyone. It it I just felt like I need to be known as AB Crazy, and Smashes needs to be known as Smashes. Yeah. Kid X must be known as Kid X. So the only way for me to do that was to actually do my own thing. Oh. See the lines get blurred between love and hate When you the one they love to hate And hate to love You keep doing all this amazing stuff That the people they put above you can't The haters love you when you put a foot wrong But I've pulled a few strong strings before I've paid my dues And not a god could call an angel for the hook of this song Smashes was also one of the earliest artists to work under the Cash Time label until his eventual fallout. However, this kid has an incredible come up and I'll explain to you later why this is the case. After only starting to write raps back in 2009 when he had first heard Drake's classic Best I Ever Had is when Smashes fell in love with hip hop and after being discovered way back in 2011 on YFM's Sizz and Scoop freestyle circuit, Smashes was quickly picked up by Cash Time Fam with the high hopes of making it in the hip hop scene. But after working tire tirelessly as a group at the Cash Time camp, Smashes realized how this was jeopardizing his solo career as an MC, realizing that he had yet to find his own identity and was always only focusing on the crew, which I must admit was a selfless act by a then young MC. Smashes struggled to cope with not having an identity and by 2013 he decided to find his own voice departing from cash time and off to discover his true music identity. The issue was, as soon as he had left the label, his career substantially slowed down and he ended up taking a break from the music world almost vanishing into thin air. But after a few years, Smashes made a comeback, surprisingly changing his name. This is where the story gets interesting, 
because Smashes is actually the artist many modern hip hop listeners know, now know as Zinger. Yes, that Zinger, indeed. In fact, Zinger came out with a large statement on his name change, basically explaining how he had realized he was losing focus once he had joined the hip hop world, being distracted by the celebrity lifestyle instead of focusing on himself as an artist. He used a good analogy that to him, Smashes had failed a year at school and felt that he had failed himself and disappointed his fans and now needed time to discover himself. I mean, do I need to go on more about Zinger's recent achievements? The guy is currently signed to DJ Maporisa's Black Boy label and he's gone on to release his 2018 album for the level and dropped countless singles like his banger Lala and Imaliam in 2019 and this year he worked with Slick on the song Fresh Take and let's not forget my personal favourite song by him Lead The Way reuniting with his former boss KO and finally he released his latest album on a different which I recommend you check out. According to Zinger, he still has a great relationship with his former cash time mates and he's come a long way back to relevance in the hip hop scene which I gotta give him credit for and I can't wait to see what else he has in store for us. I signed to Sony um, earlier in the year under the Black Boy Adventure because I'm a Black Boy artist first. So yeah, um, we're gonna be doing the whole thing I think with Sony. It's the journey, you know? You go, like, just how it happened, being signed, being independent, and getting together with a, an amazing producer, and then creating this Black Boy thing, and then signing with Sony. This has been a fire journey. You know, the relationship with Sony is cool. It, it helps a lot, you know. It's It came at the right time, at a time where I'm like super confident, like just in my music. According to KO, Kid X was supposed to be the Drake of Cash Time, which meant KO saw a lot of potential in the young MC, who he felt would eventually surpass his level as a rapper in SA. However, as we all know, that never really happened. In fact, it was reported that the only reason Kid X was snatched up by Cash Time was because of a recommendation made by his close pal, Smashes, who was already part of Cash Time. Apparently, his love for hip hop started after he had watched the classic Eminem film, 8 Mile thus encouraging him to pursue a career in music and where he got to work taking over the scene alongside his Cash Time fam. I mean let's not forget that Ka Kid X was considered a valuable member at Cash Time, heavily featured on many of their songs like his Parson Special and Cooler Bag, but we cannot forget his memorable feature on the hit Kara Kara which played a huge role in his bo boost to stardom. However, after that he never really reached the hype many expected him to achieve and it was a huge shock when by the 19th of August, it was announced on Twitter by LiveAmp that Kid X had officially departed from Cash Time and was in a negotiation with Questa. And this was massive news. The guy didn't even release a project under the label and many questioned why he made this massive decision. But according to X, he felt that Cash Time didn't have the same vision as he did when it came to solo music, even adding that at one point, he had worked on an entire project and presented it to the label. However, to his surprise, they didn't see or hear what X had presented to them and this is when it was apparent that X had felt he needed to move on from the label. According to Kid X, he has no regrets of his time at Cash Time, even stating, My time at Cash Time was actually a foundation, just in terms of where I'm at right now. I spent about 5 years there and the knowledge and experience that I got from the Amakhutman is something that I couldn't trade for anything else. According to KO, he felt otherwise, stating that Cash Time had given X enough of the basics to fill the superstar level and that X had sent the demo for his project. However, they felt it wasn't sufficiently qu qual sufficient quality for an album. KO honestly felt like he was trying to help X. However, X took may maybe took it the wrong way and maybe felt offended by this and the demo was worked heavily by Kid X's team and released as just a mixtape titled Three Quarter Pace and not as an album, which may have been the final straw for Kid X. 
But Kidex has gone on to have a decent music career, finally releasing his album titled Thank the King in 2018, which was given a lot of plays and many had and had many bangers and features like Ipati featuring Questa, Mama featuring The Legacy, and of course Auntie featuring Chiano Sky. He also has other bangers like Dan, Dan Omtu and Kikili Kiki. Now you've recently left Cash Time. This is one of your first performances since you since we've learned that you left the yeah. the label. What's life after Cash Time like for for you now? I feel like I'm asking everybody that question yeah. these days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, life after Cash Time for me is still business as usual. You know, I'm in the latter part of my stages of the first album. I'm about to put that out. So, I mean, I've started something called Rap Life, which is a company that I co-own with Questa. So, I mean, we're going to pick up a couple of, you know, fledging artists as well, just to give them the platform that we were given as well. So, I mean, those are all the things that I'm planning for 2017 and beyond. Joburg is full of characters joined by one of them right about now. My lady, introduce yourself. What is your name? Constivacious Lemazan with two Zs and three Ns. Now, we move on to another valuable member of Cash Time, Moosley, also formerly referred to as Skanda Queen, and was at one point the leading female MC in Mzanti. Moosley was born No Moosley Mabena in 92 and rose to success after selection on the MTV-based VJ Search in 2012 and becoming a presenter for MTV, launching a dream into becoming a star in the music and presenting world. Fun fact, before her success on MTV, Moosley had actually also entered the SABC1 Live Presenter Search and the SABC1's Media Career Guide Presenter Search, but was unsuccessful at both. However, her drive and ambition kept her to push further and this basically defines what kind of person she is, which is hardworking. This actually caught the attention of Cash Time Boss KO, making it his goal to sign her to the label in 2014, even though she had no prior musical experience. Yet, he was adamant that Moosley could be made into a star. The hype was real with Moosley, even earning a co-sign from the one and only Super Mega, announcing the faith he had in the young star. She started off with a bang being featured on songs like Rouge's Bongo Zaka and Kid X's banger titled 7. She continued the hype working alongside veteran DJ Speedstar on their song Don't Panic, an appearance on Deleuze's song 6AM, and let's not forget a feature on the remix of the classic aka hit, Baddest. And it was quite clear that Moosley was highly skilled as a rapper, especially with a lack of background in the music scene, and fans all over the nation were applauding her efforts. But the downside of all of this was that now she was heavily skilled at two things. Her rap career and presenting career were clashing, and she was still a presenter on the MTV at, time, at the time. And by 2016, not so long after her signing, Cash Time CEO Tawi Sokati publicly announced that Moosley was no longer with the label, which obviously shocked the nation as at this point Moosley was considered a heavyweight ambassador for Cash Time. Apparently this occurred due to the differences Moosley and Cash Time had in regard to her vision as an artist and entertainer. According to Moosley, there was never any bad blood between her and the label and that she in fact was just looking for a path that would further her both in the music and presenting and that the split was really all mutual between both parties. Even K.O. himself sent his love towards the star and wished her all the best in her career. She has gone on to do big things in both her music and presenting career. Cash Time wasn't her only departure though, as she had also decided to move on from working on MTV and moving on to present V Entertainment on the Vuzu channel, and in 2018 she went on to work alongside the well respected Somizi on One Magic. She also went independent, starting her own label, No Muzi Mabena Music, going on to release her 2017 mixtape Versus. And by 2018, she released her first debut studio album titled Victory, which was shown a lot of plays by many listeners. And just this year, she released her second studio album titled I'm a Star, which I recommend you check out if you haven't. I'm happy to see a celeb like Muzugan to take on both her talents and do so well in both departments, as well as her many other business ventures. And I can't wait to see what else she also has in store for her adoring fans in Mzanzi. I joined Cash Time at the time, we were both these really big emerging brands. They were really just kind of 
solidifying their place in the hip hop game and I was just like solidifying myself just in the industry as that mm. cool chick. So when we started working together, like everything was great and we were growing and we were building and we built so much that things just started overflowing and you know what I mean? So I just needed to kind of work with people that can do everything. Mm. And at the time they were like, yo, if that's where you see yourself, do your thing, yo. If that's what makes you happy, go off, do your thing, which I really, really love and respect them for because they could have just like left me gathering dust, no pun intended, at the back. And um, yeah, so the split was definitely mutual. It wasn't a case of like, oh, why are you doing this to me? Like, mm. it's all love, it's all family, and we'll probably be doing a lot of stuff really soon. <laughs> Mags has been involved in the music scene for many years, dating back as the early 2000s before even joining up with Cash Time. In fact, his earliest appearances date back to his appearance on the late Plo Kids albums Heads and Tails and DNA. He went on to release his sophomore mixtape in 2006 titled Sorry for the Long Wait and by 2009 he released his debut studio album titled The Breakout which garnered a lot of success even landing a Metro FM nomination. He later went on to form part of the group Glitz Gang alongside other artists known as Sean Pages, Morale and of course Altido. The problem many of his fans had with Mags was his inconsistency when it came to his rap style or his constant click changes but by 2014 the MC finally decided he would link up and join the Cash Time team releasing the song Chotlozi. He would continue to work with the crew alongside other label mates like his feature on the banger One Time by KO and other Cash Time mates. He also went on to work with other artists like The Les, DJ Dimples, Vigilante and some of his own work but by 2017 the MC had announced his departure from Cash Time after reports that his relationship with the label had dwindled and he felt it was time to focus more on himself as an artist. Some reports also rumoured that the departure happened due to the delay of Mags' album. However, this was delayed by Cash Time CEO Tabi Sokati. Everyone turned their attention to KO, however, due to the fact that many of his Cash Time signees had now been leaving the label and KO's only response at the time was his post on Insta with the cash caption Trust nobody. Mags has gone on to continue his music career, releasing his album For the Love and Glory with standout songs like Vaya, Big Time and of course Bebatini. He's also gone on to work on other songs and it's good to see Mags is still, he still plays a role in the hip hop world to this day. I don't know what people wanted to know, like I said I didn't do any interviews but I left Kev's time the most honest reason is that I started feeling like I wasn't a priority. I'm talking. And once you start feeling like a priority, maybe you should look elsewhere. Because, you know, shout out to the team, man. Like, I mess with a lot of these guys. I don't think they did it consciously. Maybe it was subconscious that they put us on a back burner. But I felt like I was on a back burner. And I didn't deserve that. You know what I'm saying? I, the caliber of the artist I am, I felt like, you know, we could have done better. And, yeah, man, that's why I never got to show a few of my videos, you know what I'm saying? But shout out to Cash Time, like I don't be with any other man, because we all so love. But business-wise, yeah, man, like I felt like I was in the back program. I wasn't a priority anymore, that's why I had to step out. Not much is really documented on Masandi's rise or his affairs with Cash Time. He was the only R&B artist to be picked up from the label and made his mainstream breakthrough on his feature on the classic one time. He's continued to release more music like his song Ngane Yabantu, Run It and his biggest song of his catalogue titled After Party. However, I doubt his career has gained much attention anymore as some of his latest music still sits around the hundreds which is a bad sign of any artist's career who was once surrounded by the best talents. Hopefully he can pick himself up and reach the highs again. Now I've already covered most of Tuxa's early life and growth into the music scene alongside Mai and KO and how they had decided not to include their former crewmate into the formation of Cash Time Life. But I'm glad to say that Tuxa is still involved in the music scene even after what had previously happened to him. 
He's gone on to work with other big name artists like his song Ela featuring Cuesta back in 2016, Say No More featuring Fifi Cooper and his song Monifere featuring Wizzy Beats. And I'm just happy to see that he's still involved in the music scene. And the people are concerned out there, they're like, yo, why aren't you in the cash time pictures when they put what's beef, what's going on? Come on man, tell us what's going on. Ah uh, no, there's no beef, you know, like it's just like differences in um, getting to decisions and making decisions we we're still brothers, I mean, you know, there's nothing that's um, personal, it's just business and it's growth, uh, but I'm not going to say much, I'm just going to say that it's just differences in, um, you know, the thought processes and it's differences in opinions, so that's the reason why you see Chuck, you know, not being part of cash time. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. Yo, we out here, Mai. Yeah, man. I am shooting the video for your new single. Oko. Oko, Oko. Yes. Um, so guess, so guess, so yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Like, more than anything, you know, like, I, I like the back of the song from Um, so guess, so guess, you know? At this point, we already know that Mai was heavily involved with everything Cash Time and him and Keo had spent the most time at the label as they had been the earliest names to start it. Mai had done a lot of work at Cash Time as a solo artist and even behind the scenes. He went on to release songs like Ukogo, Kingpin, Lie To Me and Sasela. However, by 2017, after most of the ro their roster had left the label, things was becoming difficult for the two executives. KL and Mai having to face many questions from fans who had witnessed this once dominant crew burn and crash in just a few years. After Mai had released his album Township Counselor, it had become apparent to the MC with him even stating, it was a really tough time for me. I had to stop promoting the album because people were asking about cash time and not my album. According to fans, Mai couldn't be both a businessman and an artist at the same time. He also stated his difficulties at the label, claiming that he had tried to steer the label in a certain direction and that the company desperately needed unity and that everyone was to blame for the downfall of Cash Time, even himself. This eventually led to his departure in 2017, however it was never a sad ending between him and KO, and he even went on to start his own production company titled Ganda Ganda Productions, releasing his album 212. Mai even stated that he had finally fixed the relationship between him and his brother, which I was happy to hear. He's also gone on to release more music like Yizinto, Le Vibe, Gawe, and many more, and I'm sure Mai will continue to play a huge role as a hip hop uncle of the game. Like everybody knows, like what we're trying to push right now, Cash Time Live. Yes, sir. It's kind of like a lifestyle movement that we're trying to push right now. More than anything, it's just an attitude. So we're, we're trying to just rebrand ourselves as tear gas you know, and, and see if we can you know spread ourselves and and have like just good songs out individually this year and see if we can have a buzz around and when we come back at least i think the level of of the branded tear gas will be up there because of the good products we'll be releasing individually ay, 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 ay. Finally, we reach the last artist under the Cash Time label, KO. And I gotta give it up for KO, as he had worked his ass off to get Cash Time up to the level it had reached. His aim was to introduce the best talents into the hip hop world, gifting us listeners with the best new artists, and he put most of his faith and resources into these artists with the hope of the different MCs growing to become heavy hitters in the game. However, that did not go to plan with many of them abandoning the label he had worked so hard to build. According to KO, he had even gave most of his beats and hooks to these artists and most of those turned his artists into household names. After the success of his 2014 album Skanda Republic, 
The plan was for the rest of the artists to follow through with albums of their own and eventually a combined album with all the stars titled Cash Time All Stars. However, that never happened and the project that his artists did release didn't do the numbers they had hoped for. According to KO, all the delays in the albums had little to do with him and actually was really was due to the pace of his artists and albums not living up to expectations before the release. All of this proved too much to the MC with him even stating, I felt after everyone had left I was the one exposed to the scrutiny which made me look like the bad guy because I was always at the forefront. Also adding, and I didn't manage the scrutiny properly. I didn't realize that my silence was feeding the gossip. Cash time was done at this point with everyone pursuing their own solo career and KO and Tabi Sokati had split. However, it's pretty clear that out of all these, these artists that was under the cash time label, KO has in fact been the most successful artist, dropping solid projects like the Wet album and Sky of Republic 2, both releasing in 2017, and of course his latest album, PTY Unlimited, releasing in 2019, hosting bangers like Flight School featuring Java, Say You Will featuring Nandi Madida, and of course his banger Super Duper. He has also gone on to start his own label, Skanda World, where he continues his goal of exposing new talents into the hip hop world like Loki, who is his first signee on the label, releasing the hit song Killer Combo featuring Zinger, Tillerman, Loki, and Mary Chan. KO will continue being heavily involved in the music scene and I'm pretty certain that he will finish his career with a legendary status as he has done so much for the hip hop scene over the many years. But for now, I can't wait to see what else he has in store, especially with the scandal world taking off. As we go along, obviously there's going to be some new soldiers that we're going to pick up along the way, but obviously this time around, you know, it's going to be a lot more different. You know, it's going to be very business oriented compared to what we did with um, Cash Time, for instance, where it was more like a family structure. Um, so this time around, I'm going to be running a very tight ship, you know, corporate, um, top to bottom, where like the artists need to be, they need to stand on their own two feet without relying or using me as a crutch, you know, so that's how we want to build it. Let's be real for a moment and just acknowledge the good times cash time has provided for us over the early years. I for one won't forget my younger days having my closest pals all bumping the classic kara kara while doing the legendary dance move while dressed up in the cash time gear that happened all over in 2014. And in my honest opinion, the fall off feels like it really happened because of a complete misunderstanding between all the artists and there was no solid game plan that was implemented in furthering each artist's solo career, which is why I understand why they felt it was the right time for them to move on. I'm just glad to see that there was never any bad blood between the label or the artist at any point where it turned out into a toxic relationship and every artist had the opportunity to leave peacefully unlike other labels we've seen in the past. Even though cash time is considered a thing of the past, I doubt many will forget how legendary the term cash time is and hopefully someday the artists who were once part of the team could reunite and maybe release something for their fans who had once supported the cash time life. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I put in a lot of work for it and uh, I really hope you guys check out my other videos. I hope you guys like and subscribe and uh, you know how it is. Peace.